Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back one more time. This is the State of the Nerd Union, where we talk about all of our favorite topics that involve nerdy shit. So, tonight, we're going to nerd out. We're going to nerd out tonight about horror movies, mainly that they all suck. And if you go see them, you're a very special kind of person. A very special kind of person who likes to dress up in costumes around Halloween and not like during the rest of the time of year at conventions like normal people. Like, why would you wear only a costume on October 31st and not, like, mid-June? Because it's hot as balls out there. And in fact, if you are that kind of person who would do that, what are you doing listening to this podcast? Yeah. Hey, hey, we want the, we want the regular people. <laughs> no, regular people, don't don't run. Uh, and they've already shut their laptop. <laughs> only if they know that the meaning of life is 42. And if they give you another answer... Yeah. I'm sorry, we're off topic. Anyway, Perfect. horror movies. They suck. Kenny, all right. in charge. First things first, what is a horror movie? Because that 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 definition can get pretty wild. So just take a stab at that real quick before I ask the most pertinent question. Horror movie is any kind of film that concentrates exponentially on the loss of human life. Not maybe not just necessarily the loss of human life, but on some kind of element that causes us uncomfortability. Whether whether it's some kind of supernatural elements, uh, some kind of serial killer, some kind of loss of life. Something that's usually aimed at a scare tactic but causing some kind of scare emotion in you and as the audience. So not when your girlfriend drags you to go see, you know, whatever the new Nicholas Sparks movie is, because I don't know what they're called. Um, but one of those. That doesn't count. Jerry, answer. Horror movie. I would have to say it's definitely a movie that's focused on scaring the ever-loving Jesus out of you. And also... The Passion of the Christ. <sighs> Oh, wow. they're scaring the early Jesus in There you go. Sorry. Get it right. Wow. Anyways. But more focused on that. It's more focused on basically causing you to not sleep that night. If it's going to have a plot, sometimes they have a good plot. There's been a very few that have had good plots. Hmm. Interesting you'd say that. <laughs> As we go into that. Yeah. Well, let's give a further answer. In no, answer. I'm done. Okay, good. All right, because here's the consensus we've reached. A lot of horror movies just suck. Yeah. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. We're talking about this podcast, and we're like, all right, we're going to make something good out of it. We couldn't do it. <laughs> no. There, no, no. We're trying to find redeeming say, qualities, but we couldn't find anything redeeming about most of them. This is not to say that all horror movies are bad, but the mass-produced... Uh, Texas Chainsaw, Freddy, Jason, Friday, 13th crap. that gets pushed out. Well, that's the so, thing is that in each one of those, except for Jason, they have, like, one good one in them. And it's usually the first. Is that Halloween. Original, like, people remember those first outings and kind of... The original Halloween, the original Texas Chainsaw, the original Nightmare. You know, those are all usually pretty good. And then the, what follows after it is usually just just crap somebody slapped together and just said, hey, just kill a few dead bodies along the way, and hopefully people will turn up. Yeah. So, Kenny, why, why do all horror movies suck? Or, I'm sorry, why do most horror movies suck? It's just, it's just kill porn, tor torture porn. That's what a lot of it just ends up being. Uh Yes, there are some legitimate scares in some of them, in some moments, but it's become so predictable that it only, it's just become, this is, uh, look at how we killed this person. Look how we saw this person's leg off. Look how we set these two people against each other. Look at the guy that continues to I'm come back and come back and come back and come back. Trevor? Trevor. Hey, party people. Trevor! <laughs> okay, we're, we're talking about there? horror. Okay, there most uh, most are garbage they're utter garbage i will not even like i really don't even want to dignify it with more than that i want to talk about like the seven good horror movies that exist and then that's it trevor really likes horror movies trevor loves hating things i want to let y'all know that right now but it's One so of easy love to hate is this horror movies and i'm there with you trevor there's like seven good ones i think i own seven <laughs> <laughs> I own maybe seven and Most of those movies. science fiction horror movies. They are. Yeah. Like, I'm even looking at the ones that I like. Let's see. <laughs> the Thing. The Thing. Yeah. Sci fi movie yeah. that happens to be scary. Even though, yes, John Carpenter is doing it. Alien, which, as you got older, is not as scary, but still it's got the horror elements. Sci fi movie. Event Horizon. Sci fi movie that movie still freaks me out. <laughs> I refuse to watch it right now. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're... no, we're not watching it. All there right, fine, home. continue, Kenny. Uh, and then the rest with the, the only two that I like, uh, outside of those is The Orphanage 
which still is not super, a super horror movie. It's just a good little mystery. Uh, Psycho, you could say it's a thriller mystery that's got horror elements. And then the other three that I like aren't technically horror movies. They're just parodies. Scream, Slither, and uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. If you haven't seen Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, I suggest you do that. After Holy Spock. crap, Tucker and Dale is awesome. So throw a parody there are only two movies I want to add to that list, and both of them are making fun of horror movies. Oh, what did well, I forget? Yeah, you, you forgot two of them. One of them I'd be surprised if you heard about. Uh, the first one is, we all know, is Cabin in the Woods. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I saw my list, but I didn't say it. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great, great movie, but if you're really paying attention to the movie, it's actually making fun of horror movies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the other one is, I would be shocked if any of y'all had seen this, Behind the Mask. And yep. it's, sort of, it's sort of like if a documentary film crew followed Jason around uh, and, and sort of like followed a horror movie villain around. That's funny. And it <laughs> is... It starts off really funny and gets progressively darker and more disturbing. Uh, and so it starts off as being making fun of horror movies and then becomes a love letter to them. But you know what? I hate horror movies and I still like the movie. So that should tell you how much, how good of a movie it is. Yeah. What if you got to throw parodies of horror movies in there? You got to throw Zombieland. No one cares about Zombieland. It's so not weird. a horror movie. I said it's yeah, let's of come. It's making fun That's of an action movies. comedy. That's, it's more action comedy than it is horror. I think it's a parody. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely. It is a parody, but I would contend that zombies are in a different like ballpark. They might still fall under horror, but when I think of horror, I'm thinking of Freddy, I'm thinking of Jason, I'm thinking of uh, Michael so Myers. Like 28 that's... Days Later or Which, anything like that. Coincidentally, we didn't mention any of those movies, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, I was gonna say, like, the only ones that I would really add to that list is, uh, Evil Dead 2. Okay, yeah. I enjoy uh, that movie. Yeah, okay. The Shining, yeah. I think is a very classic. Oh, yeah. I did. Very, very excellent movie. I just don't like rewatching it. It's not a bad movie, I just... It's I very long, though. It's a three-hour horror movie. Yeah, it just... Um, The Shining, Evil Dead 2, and, uh... Can we consider Titanic a horror movie? Because I just nope. feel like it's a train nope. wreck the entire time. No, nope. no. Nope. Just because you were terrified. <laughs> like Shipwreck the entire time. Yeah. Or you were emotionally scarred from it. Like any Nicholas Sparks movie that a boy has been forced by his girlfriend to sit through. <laughs> does not count as a horror movie. Okay. Just because you watched The Time Traveler's Wife. And you were right. scarred from it. Does not mean it's a horror movie. All right. So, if he doesn't get Zombieland, then I won't get Titanic. Okay. All right. All right. Deal. <laughs> Evil Dead 2 and The Shining. Okay. Jerry, so, is there anything other than Zombieland you want to add to this? No. All Stand right. Horizon is the scariest thing I've ever seen. Then the rest of all those horror movies. The 28 all... Days Later might fall. It might. Anyway. Okay. So let's let's discuss, like, we've, we've talked about which ones are good. Let's talk about why it's just a cluster of crap out there. About why there's this giant genre of just badly produced shit. Well, it's like sex, drugs, and rock and roll, except now it's sex, blood, and adrenaline. <laughs> You're just taking out two parts of the equation. And they're just coming up with more and more inventive ways to uh, show that to us. They've always got a top. The next, each saw had the top, the one before it. One was just in a simple little room, and then that bumped up to being in a, a house or something. And it just didn't just devolved into, it was already devolved into craziness, but then it just, it continued to just fall down. Uh, and I only watched the first two. Uh, there's no consistency between uh, w villains coming back. It doesn't make any... There's more plot holes in these horror movies than uh, most sci-fi movies. At least the, ho the plot holes in a science fiction movie, sometimes they m realize they've made a mistake and will kind of play off of it or make a joke about it. These like pay no attention to that whatsoever. Well, also, when, when you're dealing with science fiction and they make a mistake... Science science in a science fiction movie is magic to a fantasy movie. They just science the problem away. So that sort of helps with the suspension of disbelief. Because um, in Star Trek, you could just have Jordy come along and say some serious techno, ba uh, techno babble and be like, mm -hmm. yeah, they'll do that. And so when you're dealing with The Thing or Alien or something like that, it's, oh, and it it has acid or it's a hive mind type deal and you just believe it. Yeah. 
because if you're dealing with something otherworldly that you don't fully understand. So it's much easier to believe the craziness. But when you're dealing with, say, Michael Myers, who is this rolling rampage, William Shatner face thing <laughs> of death. You might need to explain and, that for people that don't know that. They took uh, a William Shatner mask and painted it white and put it on his face. Okay. That's it. And so, like, it doesn't explain why is Michael Myers... Uh, why is Michael Myers unkillable? Why can't he be stopped? At least Jason, it's a curse. There is a magical element. But the movie's so freaking cheesy, you can't take it seriously. Uh, oh, but, God. I mean, on that point, though, a lot of times with things that are horror, the more that it's explained, the less scary it is. That's yeah. true. Because, uh, take Hannibal, for one thing. I wouldn't call him a horror movie. It's you know, more of a uh, I don't Psychological know. thriller. Yeah, what, yeah, sure. Yeah, Silence, Silence, of Silence of the Lambs is a thriller. Yeah, a creepy, creepy thriller. Hannibal Lecter is an awesome villain in the movie. Anyway, you go back and explain his entire origin, and all of a sudden he's not that scary anymore. The problem is, is that we talked about this earlier today. Was that most people what they're terrified of is the unknown, of not knowing what's out there. It's like when you're a child, you're scared of, you're terrified of the closet. You turn on the light inside the closet. It's not that scary anymore. Yeah. Once well, you have all the details, who cares? Why, think, why do I need to know about, like, you know, that's the problem with, I think, a lot of these movies when they go so far into their freaking franchise, they go seven, eight, nine, nine movies down. Why the hell do I really care if Freddy Krueger can come back for so many times? It's, if I know that, then why do I need to know everything, every, every single thing about them? I wouldn't say. And this is just my own opinion, and I keep no, I keep referencing this movie, but Event Horizon is the one movie that I feel like takes that backwards. And I've not seen it, so... And I would say that because the more they explain what is actually happening in that movie, why this is going on, how this happened, the more terrified I am because they use science and they use things that, theories that are currently sort of around right now to sort of explain what just happened here, and it's terrifying. Well, let's, uh, let's look at the movies that we listed off. And I think a lot of what has to do with it, even with the exception of uh, like Psycho's been out for so long that you think of it as a horror movie. But let's say for the sake of argument, you're 16 or 18 and this is your first time going through some of these movies. You don't have a lot of knowledge of it. If you go and watch The Thing and I'm sure if we could like pull up a trailer, it probably doesn't look like a horror movie. You're like, oh, man, there's something going on in Antarctica, a ship crash or some kind of alien thing going on that and as like you that. continue to go down like you're. You're not going in expecting that, and that, that way you don't treat it as a horror movie. And even re-watching it, you still don't treat it like a horror movie because you're saying this is a science fiction movie. Same thing with Alien. Uh, same thing with Psycho. Like you're not treating it as a, just a slasher film. You're like, what is going on? What the heck is wrong with Norman Bates? And it makes you intrigued. But when you go in with what we know now as like complete slasher film, it just takes all that away. There's no chance for that to ever build because you're expecting something to come around the corner. It might make you jump the first time, but that's going to be it. And that's, it's just supposed to be that real roller coaster ride, but that's not a real good movie experience. You know, we were talking earlier about like expectations and everything. And we were talking about psycho and that's one of my favorite horror directors ever is Alfred Hitchcock. And he was, a uh, he had this quote, the chief moment of terror comes in the silence before the bang, and it's not the bang itself. And when he's talking about that, he's talking about uh, all these movies that we've talked about, these terrifying horror movies. Uh, the thing you have, um, Kurt Russell, is it? Yeah. <laughs> running around, and Alien, you have Ellen Ripley. And on Scream, you have, I can't remember the female's name, but the blonde girl in the first uh, half of the movie, spoiler warning. Um. And they're running around, and you get attached to these characters, and you generally care for their well-being, and you don't want them to die. So whenever they're walking around in the silence, that's the chief moment of terror, is that you don't want these people to fall victim to the, the killer of the movie. Whereas the majority of this crap that's produced is just a non-stop kill fest. It's, they just line up these cardboard characters, these you know nobody actors who no one cares about, put them in a movie with a bare bones story and then about 30 minutes in jason starts hacking people's limbs off 
And that's the same thing that happens with Saw, and it's the same thing that happens with later uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies and whatever torture porn you want to come up with. But all these movies that are out there, it turns into they just want to cause a guttural reaction uh, to try to incite that scare. And they go for pretty much special effects over actual talented directing. Yeah. Which is why we keep saying horror movies suck, is that they're going for cheap thrills instead of quality cinematic making. And we talked about this earlier, too, is the fact that like, when you go through a haunted house, some of the scariest parts are not necessarily the part where the person jumps out at you. It's when you're walking through these dark alleys and it's this darkness and you don't understand what's going to happen next. You have no idea what's there or what could be there. And it's true of life in general. When you are going through moments where people are fearing death, it's the not knowing what's going to be around the corner, what's not going to happen next. When you don't aren't sure of how things are going to work, when you aren't sure of anything, when something you're facing the unknown in life, people are terrified by it. It causes people to do crazy things. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> but does that really explain the dumb actions that happen in horror movies? Like that's just that's got to be bad writing. Wait, wait, wait. Are we talking about like people like running upstairs? Yes. <laughs> No, that's just bad writing to put people exactly. in more serious positions so that way they have to jump out the window. Like, if there was actual horror movies that wrote smartly, or, sorry, not smartly, but... Smartly? Uh, <laughs> that wrote smartly? <laughs> hey, true phoenix. Hey, we're I'm glad we have someone here that can write smartly for our own scripts. This is the president of the double NACP people. Double NACP, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the president, Kenneth Schiff. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're never living that down, Kenny. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah. You know we got a letter, right? <laughs> From who? Uh, moving forward. Uh, <laughs> that means that someone listened to our podcast, Trevor. Woo! And complained about it. So thank you for complaining. We'll try to offend you further. Go ahead, Kenny. Uh, yeah, I think if someone actually wrote a smart script and uh, maybe, yeah, uh, made me believe that the characters are operating in the real world. But then that's the problem. I've seen so many horror movies uh, do dumb things. Uh, so, like we've brought it up before, why do mo uh, movie villains continue to come back? Uh, why do they keep coming back? Um, Does they need more sequels to make more money? I, yeah. More money. Uh, why? Uh, let's see. Why so Where are all the guns? Where have all the guns disappeared to in horror movies? Doesn't make any sense. I think half the movies that you watch, if there was a gun somewhere close by, oh, let me add the caveat, and they don't fumble it, and they take sure. the safety off. And it's loaded. No, no, wait, wait. Ellen's got guns in uh, a Ripley. Oh, no, 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 no. She didn't have gun in Alien. Nope. No, that's but Alien. See, I get, I get them not having guns in Alien. They're, they're space truckers. Yeah. No, uh, I was thinking uh, of Aliens. I'm sorry, my fault. Because she has awesome true. guns in Aliens. Yeah, she does. I'm not sure. I'm not these other movies. Not like the thing, they have a gun. They have like they got guns in like flamethrowers and the thing, but they just don't know who they're shooting at. Yeah, and they're in the like worst possible situations to use them. Mm -hmm. And then what was the other good ones we talked about? Psycho. It's like you know they don't really know who they're shooting at because you know no one's confirmed to be the killer until the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of them, it's like it doesn't matter if you shot Jason or not. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't go down. Actually, in uh, Jason Goes to Hell, the ninth one, I've actually seen that one. Like they shoot him <laughs> enough times, his body just explodes. <laughs> But then he comes back. That's the, actually the very beginning of the movie. The first scene is like, they get shot enough times his body explodes. <laughs> Complete ridiculousness. But that's horror movies for you. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, <laughs> so I mean, uh, we're, we're basically, we're beating up on uh, horror movies pretty badly here. It's, uh, I thought that was the point. But I mean, it's. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> and they it it does deserve it. The the genre really does deserve it. My single biggest problem, and this is what this is why the genre has survived in its anemic, pathetic state, um, is because people will watch a horror movie to laugh. So many of these movies exist, are made, watched, and make money. Because people laugh at them. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of people who like horror movies to laugh at them. Are we talking about like they laugh at like the human dismemberment or they laugh because of the directing quality? 
They laugh because the movie's so bad it's hilarious. Okay, okay. Uh, and but, so if a genre survives on the fact that it's so bad, that makes me hate that genre so yeah. unbelievably badly to the point where if I could destroy it, I would. See, that's uh, and it, kind of a and it makes for Halloween this, Yeah, and it, it makes me dislike any horror movies right out of the gates. I, I love Josh Whedon, but I almost did not even give Cabin in the Woods a chance because I hate horror movies so much. Oh, wow. I really enjoy that movie. Yeah. I enjoy it, too. And I'm really glad that I did give it a chance. But that's kind of the point, is I almost didn't. Pretty sure every time I see a trailer for a horror movie, I just write it off as a bad movie and not that ever have to see it ever. I honestly don't remember the last time I paid to go to see one in a the theater, and I get two dollar movie tickets during the week. Yeah, I can't, I can't remember. I still will not pay two dollars to go see a horror movie. I don't think I have. I do not remember the last one. If somebody paid me to go see a horror movie in theaters, I'd do it. Oh wait, no, I remember. I saw White Noise. That was would it be allowed to have beers? White Noise. Oh. I, I mean, like, I would just, I, I would just sneak that in. Yeah, that would be my caveat. Buy me the ticket and give me a beer, and I'll have a great time. I might get kicked out of the theater, but I'll have a good time. I think the last one I saw was Saw 3. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and after that one, well, I was like, I am done. I, I am done. Yeah. Gosh. I hate these movies so much. Oh, my God. They're so bad. Oh, did I say that out loud? Oh, yeah, you did. But I think that pretty much sums it up. Oh, so we would just like to, you know, reframe one more time that uh, horror movies in general are just badly produced crap with bare bones story and horrendous acting and highly talented special effects because that's all they're relying on that movie. Mm, corn syrup. Lots of corn syrup and good visual effects. And, um,. All you people who keep turning up for it, stop it. You're the problem, people. Stop it. You know what really grinds my gears, America? <laughs> you. As a family guy reference. Oh, I'm sorry. You're freaking That's fault. better than a horror movie. <laughs> it's sad when Stop family buying this garbage. But you know these are the same people watching the same Because of you. Well, All right. unless, unless anyone's got any other comments about why horror movies are so bad. I mean, do we want to talk about any one of the good horror movies and why we like it, or we just want to move on? I think we did cover that just by, you know. Well, all right. So uh, go check out one of the good, decent ones we talked about tonight, Alien. Me and Jerry are about to watch Event Horizon right now because I've nope. never seen it. No. Nope. About to happen. Yeah, you are. Um, you know, go watch Bleeding one Bleeding from the eye sockets. Psycho, Evil Dead 2, Shining. Some of this good stuff. There, there's good ones out there. Cabin in the Woods. It's amazing. It's hilarious. It's funny. It's Joss Whedon. It's Avengers. Thor is in it. Yeah, that's right. Chris Hemsworth is in that movie. Yeah, He doesn't have a hammer, but he's Thor. Anyway, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in one more time. If you are offended, please write to someone. Let them know you actually watch this thing. And let them know what this thing is, so that way they can watch it, too. And hopefully be offended. Good night. Horror Good night. movies suck. Night, guys. <laughs>